Hi, my name is Orville Johnson, and today here at jamplay.com, we're getting into some bottleneck slide guitar. And the slide guitar sound, this kind of thing. That type of thing originated, they say, in history in Hawaii. Uh, that that was where the first person, a person that uh, gets credit for this is a Hawaiian named Joseph Kekuku, who was supposed to be the first guy to figure out how to pick up a butter knife or a you know, piece of a bottle or something and slide it along the strings. And then it became a very integral part of Hawaiian music which came to America, Americans were exposed to it in the early part of the 20th century uh, in the teens, uh, from about 1909 through about 19, early 1920s, Hawaiian music was very, very popular in the United States. And so there's, some, there's a case to be made that the blues players in the South may have heard Hawaiian music and gotten the idea to play their guitars with slides. But then again, of course, it could have just been somebody in the South picked up their butter knife and you know decided to scrape it along their strings and came up with this sound uh, independently. We don't really know that. But uh, the first instance that we can point to in the blues where there are references to slide guitar is by the... Um, great uh, blues music publisher and sometime composer, W.C. Handy. He was a sheet music publisher around that point in the century, and that was a really big business at the beginning of the 20th century because uh, recording was not such a huge thing. If people wanted to learn songs, they went out and bought sheet music and played it on their pianos or their guitars, so sheet music was a huge thing back then, and Handy was a, a major music publisher, and he was the first uh, person to actually publish music that was called blues. He published a tune called the Memphis Blues, and he published the St. Louis Blues and a lot of other stuff, and uh, he reminisced in uh, his writings that he discovered the blues one time in Memphis when he was in a train station and he said there was a black uh, itinerant musician that was sitting in the train station and scraping a butter knife along the strings of his guitar and making this mournful sound. And that was where he discovered the sound of the blues. So that's the first time that we actually heard about slide guitar relating to the blues. But it's a beautiful sound and fun to play great to listen to, and it's very, the, the greatest thing about slide guitar is the way that it helps you to imitate vocal sounds, singing sounds, because you know on the guitar you're sort of limited a little bit by your frets. You know, you can press a string down and that string touches a fret and it makes a certain note, right, which, you know, that's nice, but you know, between this note and this note, you know, two adjacent frets, there are notes in between those two notes. Hear that? There's a lot of, there's a lot of space actually in between those notes where we can find some good sounds and some expressive sounds. And one of the best ways to do that is with the bottleneck slide. So let's talk for just a second about what kind of slide you should get and how you should wear it and that sort of thing. And I'm going to give you my recommendations on this because, you know, people have figured out a lot of different ways to play slide guitar. So, you know, my way is not the only way, but it is my way. And so I'd be happy to share it with you and hope that it helps you. So I like to wear the slide on my little finger. Some people like to wear it on their ring finger. Some people uh, even wear it on their middle finger. I think Bonnie Raitt is probably the most uh, famous and visible uh, artist who actually wears the slide on her middle finger. A lot of people use their ring finger, but the reason I like to put it on my pinky finger is because I like to be able to use my other fingers to play 
the rest of the strings on my guitar. You know, if I have my slide on my little finger, I can still play, you know, almost. You know, almost all the chords that I know how to play, I can play most of them with just those three fingers. So I like being able to do that and then mix the slide in with what I'm doing. So having it on the pinky is really good for that. And I also like to play slide a lot in standard tuning rather than in open tunings. Although, you know, I play in open tunings too, and we will uh, learn some songs in open tunings, but I want to start out uh, teaching you some songs in standard tuning that you can play using the slide. And I came to that realization because I've played in lots of bands over the years and uh, a lot of times being the lead guitarist. And I love playing slide, but two things I don't love are I don't like retuning my guitar on stage. I hate that really. Uh, because it seems like once you start retuning your guitar, then you're never in tune again for the rest of the night. So I try to avoid that. And I'm also way too lazy to carry, you know, three or four guitars to the gig with me and have them all in different open tunings so that then I can just pick up the one that's in the tuning that I want to use. I hate, hate dragging a bunch of extra stuff along to use on one song or two songs. So my solution to that was I figured out how to play slide in standard tuning and I was able to make a lot of good sounds that way. And a lot of great blues guitarists did that too. Muddy Waters played slide in standard tuning and another great guitarist you might look up if you're you know looking for people that have done this uh, is Earl Hooker. He was a cousin of John Lee Hooker and he was a really uh, well-known and well-appreciated blues guitarist around Chicago in the 50s and 60s, played in a lot of bands, and he played a lot of his slide playing in standard tuning and would mix his slide playing in with his fretted playing so well that there are times when you can hardly tell which is which, you know, except you'll hear that fluid phrasing that you can get with the slide mixed in with the fretted note. So it's a great sound. So that's why I like to wear it on my little finger. And then the way the slide should fit, I prefer the slide to be about the length of my finger. I like it to not be longer than my finger. That's the most important thing is for it not to be longer than my little finger because I like to feel like when I'm playing with the slide, I like to feel like I'm actually playing the notes with the tip of my little finger, which I have a very good sort of physical connection, you know, to feeling where the, the end of my finger is. I kind of know where that is without even thinking about it too much. But if I have something sticking off the end of my finger, it's kind of like, um, you know, if you're used to driving a Volkswagen and parallel parking it and then suddenly you're driving a Cadillac and you're trying to you know, back into this parking place and it's like you're trying to look out over the front end of your car and it looks like it's about a mile long and you can't really tell, you know, where the front of your car is when you're trying to do that. Well, I can't really tell where the end of my finger is when I've got something hanging off the end of it. So I try to make my slide be about the length of my finger so the end of it is right around the tip. I like it to be long enough to cover the rest of my finger. I like it to be tight enough so that I can hold it like this and it doesn't fall off. Uh, you know, you don't want it so tight that it turns your finger blue, but if you just have it snug enough so that it doesn't fall off, uh, so that you don't expend energy just holding your slide in place. Uh, and then this particular slide that I'm using today, it's got a little round top on it, which is, that's kind of unique. You know, a lot of the slides that you see, that they're called bottleneck slides because people would break off the bottle, uh, the bottleneck from a wine bottle and use that, you know, to slide along the strings. And this one is actually a slide that somebody gave me. I don't really know what brand it is. I don't know where it came from. But um, the reason I use it is not really, people always ask me when they see me using it about that round end if that's a really good thing. You know, I don't really use that round end for anything. It's just there. But the thing I like about the slide is that it's the right length. It fits on the right tightness. And then I kind of like it too because it's chrome plated. So I get a smoother 
sound. You know, it's not scratchy like some. I've had brass slides that sound a little scratchy and whiny to me. I don't like that so much. So I kind of like the chrome plating. That's that's kind of a good feature on this one. So find yourself a slide that will fit on your little finger. That's what I recommend. That is about the length of your finger. That is tight enough to fit on your finger so it doesn't rattle around and move around. And if you get one that is right in every other respect but it's a little loose, of course you can always stuff you know, a piece of tape or piece of paper in there to kind of shim it up on your finger. And so that's about all the gear that you need. And as far as picking, I really like playing with my bare fingers, kind of the same way I do when I finger pick. Although, you know, I use, fing I, I use metal finger picks when I play the dobro and when I play banjo and some other instruments. So I'm, I'm all for finger picks, but I like the, I like that feeling of, you know, my fingers feeling the strings and touching the strings. And I like certain ways that I can damp the strings with my bare fingers. And so let's get started just by, uh, I'm going to show you a few exercises that you can practice just to start getting a good sound and also working on your intonation, playing in tune. That's what intonation means. And when you play slide, that is really important playing in tune because you don't have any frets to guide you. Uh, so you really are dependent on hearing what you're playing in tune, you know, hearing the intonation of what you're playing. And of course, you know, any instrumentalist that plays an instrument without frets, you know, violin, a cello, uh, bass, you know, things like that, you know, they have to, they have to develop this sense too where you really can hear when you're in tune. So let's let's just use for these first few little exercises I want to show you, let's just do them all on the first string and let's use a major scale on that string. So the, where we're going to find that uh, is open, second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret, eleventh, and then twelfth. So that's just your Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do major scale. And so to play those with your slide, the first way I'd like you to play it is to play it without slides. To just play each note in tune and move to it without making a slide. So this is what that's going to sound like and then I'll explain how to do it. I'll do that one more time. So what I'm doing is every time I pick a note with my picking hand, I'm doing a thing that's called pick blocking or another name for it, the great uh, slide guitarist uh, from Louisiana, Sonny Landreth, calls this string guarding. Uh, but I've heard it more commonly referred to as pick blocking, where you pick a note and then you bring the finger that you pick the note with right back down on the string to stop it. So that's what I'm doing. Like every time I pick a note here, I pick it, I stop it, then I keep my finger on the string while I move my slide up to the next note and then I pick it again. So that way I'm able to play each note uh, without hearing the slide. So I want you to do that first just to develop um, the sense of hearing that scale in tune. Like for instance, if you, if you try to play the scale and it sounds like this, You need to work a little bit because that scale was not in tune. Uh, one way that you can have a note to sort of hear against, to hear uh, what's called relative pitch, is you could, if you're having a problem with this, you could try sounding the open E string in between each one of the scale notes you play just to give you a, a reference note of the, the DO, the root, the one note.
See, when I hear that root note, and then play the scale note, it's a little easier for me to tell. Like, for instance, try this one. That doesn't sound quite right, does it? That's a little better. How about this one? That's pretty good. Ooh, that's flat. There it is. So work on that first exercise with your key points being make sure each note is in tune and make sure that you are pick blocking, that you're picking the note, stopping it with your picking finger, and then keeping your finger on the string while you move the slide. So that's one way to practice it. Now I'd like you to take that same scale for the second thing and practice it with slides. So that would sound like this. So there you see I did the same thing uh, where I picked the note, then, but, but this time instead of stopping it and moving the slide, I, I slid it to the next note. Then I stopped it and then I kept my finger you know, on the string to make the note completely stop. Then I pick the next, then I, I pick it again, slide to the next note, stop, pick slide, stop, pick, slide, stop, pick, slide, stop, pick, slide, stop. So now practice that scale with the slides.